We are live. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, I'll be able to see you chiming in soon. Uh, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock Eastern time. I forgot about that because now that Daylight Savings finished, we've got, you know, Queensland and New South Wales, Victoria and Tassie all lined up. But the other states, you know, we've still got the lag there. So sorry about that. Need to clarify that for next time. Joining me next to me on the screen, you will see the lovely Lee. Um, Lee is from Hello Me and we are going to be talking travel today. I'm just going to, ref oh, we've got one on. Say hello, whoever that one person is. Can you put something in the chat? Oh, it's Liz. Hello, Liz. You never Gosh, fail. You Liz. are a wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Lee. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Hi, Liz. <laughs> so Lee is joining us to talk travel and in particular how to travel with less stress. Now, I know it seems a bit odd to talk travel during lockdown. However, so many of you come to Sequence and Sand because you need something to go away with. Travel is a big part of what you do in your life. And I know once the floodgates are opened and we are allowed to travel again, that you will want to do it with great gusto when you can. So we will keep talking travel. Now is the time, I think, to get as much info on the travel places that you want to go to or how to travel really well so that when the gates open, Boom, you can hit the ground running. So this is the second um, second session of our 35-part series, our Lunchtime Lives Community Connection Series, where we talk about seven different things. Travel is one of those topics with 12 awesome women. Each of them I know you will love, and they're all experts in their field. Such fun times. So sit back. Hopefully you've got your cuppa. If you're not, get yourself sorted. We are going to hit off now talking travel with Lee. Welcome, Lee. Thanks, Anita. Hi, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> there are others there, Lee, and they will keep coming in. That's what happens with these things, so don't worry. We'll still have a good time. Um, do you want to start by telling everyone a little bit about you and what you do? Thank you. And... Um, Firstly, I just wanted to say how amazing is Anita for creating this platform that we can actually, even for a brief period of time, um, forget how we're handling a pandemic at the moment, isolation, and be able to share ideas and um, learn. So thank you, Anita. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for inviting me. I'm not sure if you'll say that. I've, so, I've just... I've got this head that I always want to go on that side. But anyway, we'll get used to that. Um, <laughs> so a little bit about um, myself. We've been part of the um, travel industry for just under 30 years. Oh, my and God. And I know. It's a long, long time. We work in events and we predominantly started off in domestic, which was more like um, Melbourne to Hobart Yacht Race, and the city to St Kilda, et cetera. We used to work on those. Then we moved into meetings and conferences for the not-for-profit and then also for the corporate. And it was the corporate world that really introduced us into that incredible, luxury, wonderful world of international travel. So we've been really super lucky. We have been able to um, travel uh, to the most extraordinary destinations around the globe and call them our office, the Maldives, Bora Bora, you know, going through the Rocky Mountains um, on the Rocky Mountaineer, um, throughout America, throughout Europe, um, the Greek islands, et cetera. We've done a lot of work in Fiji and in Indonesia and in Thailand. And, um, but apart from that, where we do do a lot of long haul flights. So that's us, but hello me, I only started probably about five years ago and some of you might remember a campaign called Life Be In It and that was our very early um, work and we actually, I thought it was only 15 years. Jeff reminded me earlier it was 20 years that we took over Life Be In It, all the games and activities, um, the festivals, etc., etc., all along the east coast of Australia and, it's yes, massive. we had... That was massive. It was huge. So, yeah. yes, we had Norm and we did the commercials. And, yes, you know, I still remember one of our commercials. You might remember the family that went down to the creek and 
They had the dog and what had they been doing? They'd been exercising, but we put everyone back in the bubble car and we didn't put the dog back in. And apparently, I don't remember not putting the dog back in in the animation, but lots and lots of little sagas along the way. But it was that life being at philosophy where you truly did open um, people's eyes to the feeling that anything's possible. You know, we introduced the come and try sailings, the come and try fishing. You didn't need a lot of money to do a lot of it. Come and try gardening. As long as you're out there and just not being isolated like we are now um, and just giving things a go. So about five years ago, when I was working a lot with corporate, and don't get me wrong, it's wonderful, but it's a very, very different approach and mentality that Jeff came up with the idea. He just said, well, why don't we reinvent again a little bit? And he was the one who said, what about Hello Me? And it's um, all about saying hello to yourself, giving yourself permission to breathe and just to be kind to yourself. And through Hello Me, we, um, I guess, worked on quite a few escapes. And with those escapes, lovely Liz, and I'm not sure who else is on, but, um, you know, there's a, quite a few ladies that have Kate. since worked. Kate, hi, Kate, has worked with Anita and have also um, joined us on escapes. So you get to meet the most amazing people. I would never have met Anita, probably. I have never would have experienced cosy confidence <laughs> or the perfect cosy fit where now I don't even, Anita will just say, maybe this one would work for you, and it does. It's just fabulous. So it is an amazing environment. And it's lovely being able to travel with small, like-minded people. Some people that we've had haven't actually travelled before, and that's really special as well, having them join us. Mm. So that's a little bit of our background. And one of the things I do get asked a bit is um, how do you take the stress out of travel? Mm. I'm not really so sure that you are able to take it totally out but being organized definitely does make a difference um and i'm someone i'm a triple a personality and i am a very organized person i love lists um and one of the lists when i was looking and when anita first asked me to have a chat with you was it actually came from budget direct and i think anita will pop the link up yeah and Honestly, it's just it's um, quite interactive. And when you first go in, you just have to put down what gender and how long you're away for, what the climate is, and then it comes up with a broad list. And from there, you're able to just delete the items. But having a list does make a difference. Um, I probably don't have a list for my clothes, etc. but I lay everything out in another room. And I tend to do that sometimes even a few days beforehand. And when it comes time to packing, I actually then cull it by almost half because one of the most stressful things you can do is to carry too much in your case. Oh, it... absolutely. And that is an art, though, and it takes a lot of guts to go, okay, there it all is, now I'm going to halve it. But I actually do the same thing. And I lay them out and I probably do it about three or four days before I go and I just bit by bit. So I'm a chipper wire. I'm not a all at once kind of person. <laughs> but that's 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 the key. I agree. You've got to have that mindset of go, right, that's it, now have it. And then, yeah. you know, going to some of these places like Venice, for example, gorgeous old Venice, when Venice gets on its feet again, and it will, um, those little tiny staircases that are, some of it's like this, you know, so trudging up there with big luggage is just not an option. We don't have our own yeah. Sherpas, right? Do you provide those with travel Sherpas? <laughs> I provide Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and he certainly does help. He's a concierge. Um, but, no, and right throughout Europe it's like that. Santorini and Paris, you know, a lot of these older places just don't have lifts and you really do have to cart up. The other good thing about taking less luggage is that we try and take our luggage in an international size carry-on, which can obviously go underneath if it gets too heavy, but also can be with you for your international flights. Um, because I find one of the stressful um, parts of travelling is when your case isn't there at the other end. Oh, and that has happened so many times. 
It doesn't matter if you're a platinum or a first time flyer, it still happens to you. So I really do like the idea of having a smaller case. Um, and if you're traveling to a cold climate, you just take those jackets with you on the plane. And so you've still got your lighter stuff. And if you're traveling in places like Bali and Thailand, you just get um, your clothes laundered every couple of days for like $3, $4. So you can start to work with the smaller case. Um, other things I try and do is I um, photocopy uh, all our travel documents and leave it at home with somebody. And I also, um, obviously, you have your travel documents on your person. So even though I have a small carry-on or a carry-on bag, international size, I still also have a handbag and my travel documents are in there. I even photocopy my passport. I photocopy my credit cards. So you've just got it there. If the worst possible thing happens, you can quickly ring someone and just say, okay, this is the number of my credit card, etc." cetera. Mm -hmm. um, changing money. We tend to change most of our money before we go. Uh, I know some people don't, but invariably you'll get off that plane and you'll want to buy a coffee or your driver or your whoever you've organized something may not be there and you've got to jump in a cab or just grab a local person and they'll only take cash so i that's one of the things remembering to take your phone off your global roaming before you leave and your ipad it costs a fortune when you don't and I think you'll find many of us these days, even if you haven't requested it, have a $5 or a $10 a day plan that is built into your um, phone plan. And it only activates if someone texts you or rings you. But once it does, you can actually ring backwards and forwards and um, it does, it makes it a far more efficient way of traveling. Otherwise, there's internet just about every place you go. So um, I guess. The thing with that, Lee, is it depends on how much connectivity you need too, doesn't it? So I know when we all went to Vietnam, for example, as a family, there was a big group of us. My brother-in-law was still running his business from wherever we were. So he actually got an international plan, spoke to his provider and got a plan that worked because he knew he was going to be on it a fair bit. Yeah. I, when we got to Vietnam, the advice I got was it's so cheap. Uh, comms over there is so cheap. So when I got there, I got to uh, change my SIM over to a local SIM and we were doing data for, oh, next to nix a day. It yeah. So cheap. Um, but I and guess that, that works really well as well. Yeah. It's just whether you want to carry two handsets just in case someone still is contacting you through your old, uh, your, your original number. But yeah, so there are ways to work around it. It's just a matter of planning and and doing your research before you go, because you know, at many destinations now, it is easy enough um, to pick up the SIM cards, particularly throughout Asia, and do it that way. But and for you, I'm guessing you also probably wanted to still be able to post on Facebook and post on Instagram just to keep yeah. um, the business ticking along. And it, with that, that's when it takes a lot more data too, yeah. just putting the photos up. Yeah, so I guess it's like anything. You think of your needs, what you'll be doing, yeah. and then you plan accordingly. A bit like packing, you know, you start there. What am I going to be doing? What's the climate? What's the weather? Lay it all out for the situation. Um, maybe we can put some of the tips about um, telephony, you know, telephone and data in the feed later on because for me personally, I, I get a bit tripped up with all that. So for the others that are a bit like me. Is that all right? That's fine, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is in your carry-on luggage, even if you're taking a little bit bigger bag that has to go under the plane, carry with you anything that you truly know you need for the next 24 hours or so just in case your bag doesn't roll off the plane with you, and that includes medication. And as we saw, was it last year with that gentleman that had all his, his medication was prescription medication, but he'd put it into a pill box and didn't have any of the scripts with him or any of the actual bottles or boxes. Mm, so right. it is honestly incredibly important 
to carry your original prescriptions or carry your original box where it's got the chemist little um, sticky label on it. Um, and if nothing else also, it's if something goes wrong and even that doesn't or you lose it, you can go to a pharmacy and show them what you have been taking and, that, and they can even contact back in Australia your doctor or at the pharmacy just to get approval to you know, do a repeat for you. So that's something else there. Travel insurance, um, look, I still roll my eyes at travel insurance because no matter what, they are very clever at escaping and not yeah. doing the clause. Yeah. But I find it incredibly stressful not to have travel insurance. Mm. So we take out a yearly travel insurance and then we just ignore it. And with the travel insurances you're able to now, you um, often don't have to take one each. I'm not sure if you've realised this, but I, for some travel insurers, children under the age of whatever, as long as they're still at school or uni in their dependents, plus your partner can travel on your travel insurance. So we only travel with one travel insurance, but Jeff is listed on that. And, uh, and that saves a lot of money rather than thinking you're both going to have to take out because it's a big ticket item. It is a big ticket item. And I think last time we travelled, I had a family one. I think you're right. Um, and I did it through, you know, Defence Health is awesome. And they, so for me, they were a good go-to. I trust them. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a family one that we could all be on the same policy. So yeah. um, that's really important. And do, does it work like it does for your car where you have, um uh what is it there's a minimum that you have to pay and then they pay over and above that or all the policies are different right so um when you go through um sure save and cover more etc you'll find them to be quite different from one another even though broadly they're the same but when you're going unfortunately there's a lot of small print and yeah. um and you do need to go through a small print same as when People, um, credit cards say that they'll cover you for as long as you've paid for the trip through the credit card, then you've got travel insurance. insurance like Amex um, does, yep. A lot of companies will say, please read the small print because you're actually not covered nearly what you think you're covered. Um, and I think there's probably even been, you know, some specials on TV about credit card insurance. Now, they could equally be improving that. We don't tend to use our credit card for insurance, but I do know that that's kind of something that people speak about quite a bit. Um, the other oh, thing is... Sorry, yeah. Lee, just before we move off onto another point, with insurance um, and corona, you know, like, so we were looking at going overseas for a white Christmas for, with family and... Um, I asked the question of our travel person if in the event we've booked and we've paid for stuff and then we can't go because of corona, this was like way back before corona lockdown happened, um, are we able to claim any of that back? And she said no. So a um, pandemic is not covered. It's like your, um, is it something like when your car and a tree falls on it, it's an act of God and that's not covered? Like there's certain things they, as I say, they're very, very clever at being able to not cover a lot of so things. But I, I guess when we do eventually travel again and coming out of lockdown, that's probably one of the key things to look at is, you know, um, what will and won't be covered with insurance if something unexpected does come up that's even that, whether they can yeah. pin it on that or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, I think it's almost the world of travel is going to be rewritten after okay. this because, um, like, for example, we've got flights or credit being held with Qantas at the moment and it's a substantial amount of money. And I'm pretty sure if we really want to jump up and down, we can get a refund, but they're trying their hardest. And I can see why, because for companies to stay in business, they need that money to be sitting in their business. But equally, people need that money at the moment to live on. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to have to be so many sweetness in order to um, get entice you back onto things. Cruise ships. Uh, I saw the other day, you can now book for next year on some of these amazing cruise ships for $1 deposit. Um, so... Yeah, 
there will just be sweeteners everywhere. And once again, it'll be something that you'll just need to read and think carefully, you know, how, are, how much are you exposed? And, you know, once they started calling a cruise ship like a Petri dish, that kind of put a lot of people off and it may take some time to get back on cruising. Um, but when you think about it, planes are equally can be a Petri dish. Like how many times do you get told to make sure you clean your table before you put your food on it, put your hands on it, put your goods on it, etc. So it's going to be a whole new world. And even what properties will last, what airlines will mm. still be functioning after this, mm. um, what ships um, will still even be um, available to cruise on. It, yeah. It'll just be throwing a whole lot of balls in the air, letting it land and just saying, wow, okay, mm. what's Keep my option? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've been talking about that as a family as well and um, maybe it's the old radiographer in me, but hygiene's always been right up there <laughs> and I think these practices that we're doing now you know with being more conscious of washing our hands and wiping down surfaces and hand sanitizer and all that they're things I think that we should you know instill in daily practice after lockdown because they will serve you well especially when you're traveling you know they're mm. really important things to do well what do they say if you do something for us at six weeks it becomes a habit habit mm. We're probably well into going to be habit after you know, the amount of time that we may be in this situation. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things that takes a lot of stress out of travel is to, even if you want to be brave and be adventurous and think, no, let's just wing it, let's not organise anything, let's just see what's available, and you do get some amazing deals just rocking up to a hotel, I would still suggest to always organise your first night. So you've yeah. got off that plane. Organise a transfer, have booked in somewhere and organise an airport transfer to that place. Settle yourself in a little bit. And then after that, as soon as you talk to locals and get a feel for the land, you're probably quite easy. You can start to rock around and you know see where you want to go. But when you've done a long haul flight or even barley six hours and you get off and you, you've got that heat, a whole lot of people in front of you, um, all saying, pick me, pick me, pick me, get in my car, and um, there's noise. The last, you kind of think, well, gosh, where do I go? Where do I actually ask them to take me? So just that first night, it's just a, a good idea just to be settled. And then after that, see how you go. Mm. Um, couple more things. Always, well, I would always suggest that you take something that, in case you really have missed a flight or the plane, the flight has been cancelled, that you are able to just entertain yourself sitting at an airport and just hanging. Mm -hmm. So your e-book or your, and your a book or a puzzle or your, you know, Sudoku, whatever, it's it honestly is well worth it. And we've been on flights that it's even been a Qantas flight and um, it was a long haul and the, all their um, television screens went. So you didn't have any way of being able to watch a movie, listen to anything, and those type of things are just in just not expecting, but it's well worth having. Yeah. So just make sure you've got something there. Um, and the other thing is, and it's a little bit like your favourite clothes that you think, oh, I just want to be able to take that dress and that dress and that dress or those shorts or that top. Jewellery. It's Honestly, if you can get away without wearing your most favourite pieces or those pieces that are really sentimental, I just would or value. I just, I personally just don't travel with any of my jewellery. I just have a couple of pieces that it doesn't matter. Um, I can remember we were working in South America and they are so good at pickpocketing there. And everyone would talk about it and you keep thinking, but, yeah, and you'd watch, you know it's wow. happening somewhere. <laughs> And your watch just isn't on your wrist when you get to the other side of the road. Like it's just ridiculous things what they're able to do and it's just not worth the stress or mm -hmm. the heartache afterwards that you've lost something that you truly meant something to you. The other thing it does is that it sends a message to people that you might be more affluent than what you've, you are yeah. and that it might be worth following you back to see what hotel you're in or what other goods you've got in your hotel. So... We just don't put it out there. 
we kind of just you know, fairly um, straightforward what we wear. And I also carry a backpack um, as a handbag. And I'm mindful of that because when you think about it, it's on my back and anything can happen. But I also, over the years, have chosen designs that are leather and really good quality leather. And even when they try, because I've had it happen to me where they've tried to put a knife and how they do it, they come up behind you and do a knife under you, your bag, even when it's on the side, and try and do this. And then they can, you know, take goods out. But a good leather bag, it's really hard. You've actually got to have two hands and really tug at it. And you know straight away and you get that feel. So, yeah, I think, um, as I said in the beginning, there are so many things you can't truly control when you're travelling. You can't control flights. You can't control um, cancelled flights or if you're going to miss a connection and then you've got to reorganise to be um, somewhere else. Um, it's incredibly stressful. I don't know how many of you have stood at LA airport and you're in those huge queues and you know that your flight's being called and you think you're never going to make it. Somehow you do, sometimes you don't. But you just need to be able to go with the flow and I think apart from being organised where you possibly are able to be, the other big tip I um, would give is that it's your mindset. Just take yourself out of the situation. Um, as I said, I'm sometimes travelling with three or 400 of my nearest and dearest and it's invariably they're all heading off. You, you wouldn't believe corporates or people that own their own businesses can all scatter like, you know, four-year-olds. And you've just got to be able to be clear-minded, think it through and just hang there and relax. And it's a mindset thing. And I think you've got Erica speaking tomorrow and hopefully she might have lots and lots of tips on breathing and just smile. It's amazing what happens when you're just standing in the queue and just smiling when people are around you are getting all anxious and they kind of think, hmm, she's either something's the matter with her or <laughs> it's easy, you know. Like there's nothing you can do about it. So, yeah. and often the more you jump up and down and get aggro and in their face, they'll go. They well, block screw you. you, especially. I know yeah. I'm part Italian. I know that, that runs through your DNA, <laughs> right? The more, even though they love chaos, you know, it's if you arc up against them, they'll go right. Oh, you're going to go right to the bottom of the pile. Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah. That's right. And that's their time of power. Yeah. And if that's the last thing they do that day, they'll go watch this. Yeah. So it is one of those things. <laughs> Try and be best friends with that person at the counter because they're the only thing between you and you getting on that plane at times. Yeah, yeah, but, true. So I think that's kind of it. Why we can do a little list of some of the um, points of you know how to be um, stress not free but stress less when you less. travel. Yeah, yeah. And equally, we'd love to hear from people what they would like to discuss. The next time we talk about travel. Yeah, that's right. Um, Very good point because this is Lee's going to be on a few times. There's a couple of girls doing the travel topic for us. But, yes, if there's something you want to hear, put it in the chat and uh, we'll include it or we'll look at including it the next time. And mm. it could even be a great time to do your dream board. Your, what's your bucket list? And we can talk bucket through list. some bucket lists. Um, just face it, we've got a lot of time at the moment to um, just dream and yeah. you know, move our head space away from the anxiousness that we can all be feeling. Yeah. So thank you again, all the best, and see you next time. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. That's just awesome. Thank you. And I'll give you a big clap on, every, on behalf of everyone <laughs> who's here. Um, we will check all the comments, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. There were some huge, awesome tips from Lee there, some mass massive ones. And um, I think we will put that little cheat sheet in there um, for the girls to go and grab. Either I'll do a blog post or put it in the feed with a link somewhere, girls. We'll look after you. Add your comments in if there's something else you'd like us to cover next time around. And... Um, yeah, we will see you hopefully again tomorrow if you've got the time. Uh, there is another Lunchtime Live, even though it's Good Friday, with the lovely Erica, as Lee alluded to. And Erica is going to take us through kind moves to um, have us relaxing during this crazy corona lockdown time. 
Um, thanks and again. when you're standing in queues, you could do those moves. <laughs> when you're in queues, raise a leg and whatever it might yep. be. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, girls. That was Thank awesome. You. Lovely to see you all. Thanks, Lee. Bye. Bye. Bye.